Praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited once again to be with you on a Monday night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am Pastor Harold Timberlake, pastor of the Good Shepherd Church here in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm excited about what God is doing in this season. I'm excited about what God is doing in my life. I'm excited what God is doing in the body of Christ. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I want to I want to introduce a, a young man today, uh, Brother George uh, Hester, who is here in the studios today. I'm going to pick his brain. I'm going to come in uh, in, in his life. I'm going to I'm going to ask him the tough questions about life as a 27-year-old, as a 27-year-old, uh, and, the, and the things that he's had to go through and the things that he's currently going through even now. And I believe that today is going to be life-changing. Listen, I want you to go and, and put your, your children in, your young people in, uh, whether they uh, are, are, are in church or not in church. I want you to pull them in right now. Uh, I don't want them to miss this opportunity. Go and get every family member in the house even right now, because lives are getting ready to change. There are some things that are going to come out that I want for you to hear, and I would not want you to miss it. Welcome today. Thank you, sir. Brother Thank George, you. man, Thank how you. are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm you, doing great. You're doing well? Yes, I am. Well, I'm praise great. God. Well, listen, I wanted you to come in today, and one of the reasons I wanted you to come in is because uh, just knowing just a little bit about your story mm -hmm. and uh, and and how your, your, your life has taking some twists and some turns, but I want you to just take this, this next couple minutes to uh, just introduce yourself to this viewing world who may not know you. Uh, tell, tell us just a little bit about you. Um, tell us a little bit about some things in, in your past, okay. just a little bit, right. and, and we'll be able to go forward in our dialogue. Okay, all right. Well, my name is uh, George Hester to start off, and uh, second, I've been through... Uh, Pretty much, I want to say, you know, AG double hockey sticks and back, for lack of better words, you know. But uh, as far as uh, my, my reaching the young people in my story, uh, you know, you can overcome anything as long as your heart is in the right place and your mind is where it should be. And uh, today, I really want to just have a readjustment of focus for the people, you know, my age and maybe younger. And even some of the older people that might help us out, you know, like okay. uh, to bring people back to where they need to be. So. Good deal. Well, listen, I want you to know, man, I'm getting ready to challenge you. I'm going I'm to really challenge you, my brother, Amen. And, but I believe that you're up for a challenge because I understand that you, uh, you, were, you, you served some time. Yes, sir. Well, let me tell you this. Would you believe that I've served some time, too? <laughs> yes, sir. I, that's right. I, I served some time, but I think I served it a little bit different than you. Yes, sir. Where, you where you may have been serving it for one reason. Do you know I served it as a chaplain? Yeah, that's right. I served it as a chaplain, but both of us did some. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Listen, tell us a little bit about what happened um, in, in, uh, in, to get there. Well, see, uh, starting off, let me say, uh, first on, on, on the note of uh, both of us doing time, yes. it's all mental imprisonment. Come right? on. It's, it's no different between a CO being there than a chaplain than a warden than an inmate. You know, and that's from personal experience. I've seen guys to where they don't, they dread coming to work because they dread the loss of freedom. They don't right. like seeing their people behind bars like that's that. Right. And some people have siblings. That's right. They work there, don't know that their sibling is there, yeah. and then find out, and it's like, well, now what do I do? Now what do I say? Now where do I go? Because he's looking at me from a different standpoint, and it hurts. You know, like I saw one of my friends when I was incarcerated. Uh, he'd been my friend for about 10 years. That's I'm not right. going to say, you know, names. But yes. he, uh, I saw him, and he treated me totally different. Like, we weren't even friends. And it hurt me at first, but then he came by my bunker. He was like, man, the only reason I spoke with you and talked to you the way I did is because the warden was there, and I could have lost my job. Right. But I feel real bad that you're here. Right. You know, if you need anything, come talk to me. Right. You know, and I didn't because I, I was in my feelings about the whole situation. And, right. You know, as young people, we, we tend to do that sometimes. Right. We tend to have issues re respecting, you know, authority and positions of power, you know, and that can get in people's minds, like, why are people trying to control me? When sometimes it's really just guidance. They're really just trying to help you. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, as far as my experience, uh, it woke me up. It yeah. let me know that everything that you proclaim to be and that you proclaim to do and that you think you're doing right now can be challenged at any moment. There's always somebody out there bigger, better, stronger, and more influenced than you. Mm. You know, And it, it comes to the point where God had to get me alone to talk to me because I wouldn't listen any other way. Come on. 
I, I, was, I wasn't uh, trying to hear it. I was in the street. I was doing what I wanted to do. And my music was solely based on me. Right. I, I was thinking about me. I wasn't yeah. thinking about, you know, living right, being a husband, being a father, you know, going back to the church, doing anything. I was trying to live the way I wanted to. Right. As I saw fit to move through life was how I moved, you know. And then on, on some grounds, it could be considered as, like, a tyranny because I didn't care after a while. You know, I don't care about what people think, you know what I'm saying? I don't care about what that, what they got going on, their family, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's give me this, give me yeah. that, give me, instead of me trying to give back yeah. to the kingdom itself. Uh, now, 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 this is awesome because one of the, one of the reasons that this is uh, awesome because uh, it, it, it seems that all of us are on different different paths Amen. to the same place. Amen. Now, you being 20, uh, 27, I'm 36, yes, okay? Sir. Both young men trying you know, trying to, to make things happen, happen. for our lives, Amen. may have gone about things a different way, but I believe that we're, 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 we're right headed toward the same exactly. place even, even right now. Um, would, would you say, um, I understand that you are former, uh, that you, you are, Affiliate or yeah. former, I don't even know how that goes. Gang, <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell it's I want affiliation. Yeah, affiliation. Uh, tell me about that that gang life. There are so many people that don't know about the gang life, and I'm, I mean, I understand there's probably only so much that you can really say. Yeah, yeah. But we want to get open because I, th this is the thing. I found out that we have brothers and sisters that are dying. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and the people that are probably watching right now. Uh, uh, to the place that, of where you used to be, yeah. okay, where you used to be, but now now God has reformed you and yeah, changed yeah. you. So there there are people out there that are viewing right now. I want you to give us some some raw, uncut uh, things of of the of the gang life, uh, how you were led into the gang okay. life, and possibly even some of the things that happened in. Uh, the gang life. Tell me about friends in the gang life. As far as is there, do people sell people out? I, I, I mean, because I'm I, I'm green, okay? I'm green, and let me say this. I know I'm hitting you with a lot, but there are, there are, there are, there are masses of people that you'll be able to know, what, that that you'll be able to uh, minister to Amen. that I, they won't even accept me because Amen. I don't know that lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And and so, but that's why God has an anointing on your life, and I believe that's why we kingdom build. So I'm gonna be quiet. Amen. I want to hear about. <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say about that that life that that somebody can be be changed on today. Amen. And before we uh, do go any further, I want to let people know. Like I hope that these words really touch somebody and let them know that that is not the way mm -hmm. to take to take your life to, uh. to to go that direction. You must be. Fully dedicated to negativity is how I look at it. Because that's all it's going to build for you nowadays. The principles are different. The way it's going about is different than, you know, when I was coming up. The way people look at it is even different. You know, how, how they get the tattoos on their face and their bodies and, you know, on their eyelids and things like that. When, as I was growing up and as I was inducted, it was to be more of a concealed effort. So that the actual the police wouldn't know who you were and rival gangs wouldn't know who you were. Mm. You know, they wouldn't know you at all because wow. all y'all are supposed to move as a unit. Even if these guys are whatever over here and you guys are on this side of the street or whatever, these guys up the block or whatever, y'all should all be able to come together and still speak. You know, the higher-ups come together, they talk, and uh, us on the middle level would talk, and then on the lower level we'd all get everybody to try to be on the same page, whereas now it's a lot of aggressive, aggressiveness, excuse me, even within the central nervous system of most gangs. Mm. You know, it's like a lot of people trying to take people out. It's a lot of people who don't view it as a brotherhood. Right. Whereas when I was coming up, it was more like what led me to it was one of my older friends. Uh, I've known him for a very long time. He was just like, man, you know, you, you show some real promise, man. Like, do you want me to show you where I, we can take that to the next level, you know? And me not knowing me being young and dumb, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was like, well, he, you know, I, I'd do anything this guy say. Because, you know, I kind of looked up to him as my mentor. I was like, man, he's shown me thus far throughout this street life and hasn't led me wrong. So, you know, not knowing that as an adult, when you look back on that, all of it was wrong. But uh, in, the, in the beginning, it, it started as brotherhood, and now it's just pretty much kill or be killed, dog eat dog world. And I advise all the children and all, you know, the teenagers and young adults like that, that's not the route you want to take unless you have truly positive intentions in your heart to build your community and uplift people that you know and uplift your family because what what people do nowadays is they join and they, they get the power and they start, to, you know, as the young kids say, now they start to flex on people and want to use the muscle to quote unquote take over places and run blocks and run cities, you know, and try to run streets. But my thing is the mayor still runs the street. Mm -hmm. You know, the politicians still have this on lock. So there's no way you're going to run this neighborhood. Right. No matter how powerful you think you are and how powerful this can get, 
you know, they could send massive amounts of forces down here to, to extinguish all of us. So would we rather preserve our own community or destroy it? Hmm. Would you rather bring more negativity and more people that have the same negative view as you, or would you rather change your view on the whole and change the whole entire next generation of people yeah. that come in? Because yeah. it's not that I can tell people not to do it or to do it. Right. You know, everybody, we all make our own decisions, even down to the, the baby babies, they make their own decisions. So I, I just would say I hope that people understand when I, what I mean when I tell them that it, it's a big power. Like you told me the other day, of the power of influence. Mm -hmm. That's definitely what the gang life was about, influence. Mm -hmm. Someone could lean over somebody who has no intention of being a part of it and be like, man, you better do this. This, this ain't no option. All of a sudden, you got a new member. Yeah. And that's, that's how it goes nowadays, whereas to you, you were the one who reached out to them. You right. Know? Let me ask you a question real fast. So, you, so the, the, the love, there, there's, there's quote unquote a lot of love in the gang. It should be. To, it should be. To, to, to where, to where uh, people are searching for love. Would you, would you go as far to say that there, there are many young men or, or women that are searching for love and, and so they don't find that at places like at home or at church or in, in, in community Amen. and so they gravitate? Would you go yes. as far to say that? I would go beyond to even go say ahead. that. That's powerful because what you just spoke on is exactly the reason. That's why I did it. You know, feeling the lack of attention or the lack of love or the lack of brotherhood, feeling like you can't trust nobody because of what you're going through. So you want a group of people who can line up with you yeah. and hold you up when you need it ah. and you do the same for them. Yeah. But not thinking as a young guy, we already got this because we kingdom built. Ah, <laughs> that's what I'm we, talking we about. We already have all of this. <laughs> kingdom. We, we, we are supposed to be. Yeah, we supposed to be supposed the biggest gang be. out here. Like, tell the truth. My, we, my, my. The disciples were gang to me. Like, Come on. They were powerful. You know what wow. I'm saying? And, and powerful on a level where their influence healed people. You know, they, their words touch hearts, you know. And Jesus was all about touching people. You know, he's all about love. But then you get these people who don't have that and still feel like they don't have it once they are inducted into these situations and these organizations and they use it negatively. Like I said, they want to hurt people. They want to get all they think about is money, you know, girls and fast cars. Even right. Maybe I, I venture to say that as right. well. Instead of uplifting your community like yeah. me, myself. As I rose, you know, rose to my own level of power, my own reign when it came time. Because it, it always comes time. It's always a recurring cycle. Right. When you start on the bottom, you will eventually end up on okay. top where you're supposed to be. So then when it came time for me to be in control, people were upset with me because I wanted people to pass out turkeys during the holidays. I wanted people to go knock on doors and, and give goodwill clothes to the people that we knew. Right. Old Miss Jenkins down the road who can't really walk, we're going to go help right. her with her groceries. Right. You know, like me and my mother were standing outside one day in one of my old neighborhoods, and nine, ten guys just swarmed up out of nowhere. You know, at first she's like, like, what, what, you got some issues I need to know yeah. about? So, no, then they come over, they're like, yo, uh, are you Max mom? And they like, you know, because I went in the house, and she was like, uh, yeah, I am. Why? That's you, a street name? Yeah, Max. It's, okay. it's my... Uh, okay, go ahead, everyone go ahead. Everyone calls that, me that. That's, that's family fine. Go name, ahead. street yeah. name. But, uh -huh. uh, like, you Max mother? And I'm like, uh, yeah, she's like, yeah. So I come back outside, and they like, yeah, well, we're going to take the, the groceries in for you. Right. You know, me and her didn't lift a finger that day. Right. And she was like, that's, that's when it really dawned on her. She was like, oh, this is something serious. Yeah. Because they just did that without you even being out here. Right. Like, they were watching from up the streets. So. That's good. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me ask this question. So, so now having known that um, and been in that lifestyle, knowing what that's like, and God bringing you out of some of your situations, uh, uh, delivering you, uh, uh, prison, uh, oh, streets, things like that. Um, can you just give me a short snippet of what you plan to do with that now? And then I've, I've got to take it somewhere else right. with what you, uh, with what something that you said. But how, if you can give me a short snippet of how you plan to y utilize some of those same tools that you learned that was fabricated. Uh, from the streets with a a, a false uh, love, yeah, because whenever you're destroying other situations and things yeah, and people, yeah, yeah. then that's that's a that's a mirage or yeah, camouflage yeah. for the real thing. And we understand that that that's Satan's whole job mm -hmm. to is to is to camouflage the whole thing. So what what, what how will you utilize some of that uh, now and and going forward and moving forward? Moving forward, I would say what I what my whole initial goal really is. Is to just revolutionize love, the concept of it, because people think they know it, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, well, I love this person, and I do this for this person, but truthfully, if people knew love, it wouldn't be a problem with you loving your brother and telling them you love 
Come on. Or oh, telling God you love them. People just too I strong. Like I like to that. say that. I like that. They don't want to be. I don't, they don't want to sit here and be like, Pastor Timberlake, I love you, bro. Like nothing. No, no. There are no funny stuff. Man. Right. Like it's not funny. Right. Especially if the man has the same heart you do. He knows where you're coming from. Just express how you feel. So that's all I would say. Wow. That's really my goal. I just want to show people that it's all love. That's good. That's good stuff, man. And I and I'm telling you, people, brothers like you, man. I'm I'm so excited about brothers like you coming Thank into you. the Thank church. You. Uh, because brothers like you are going to help revolutionary, uh, revolutionize mm -hmm. the church and what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, whether in in the community, uh, at church, in homes, and things like that. As a matter of fact, uh, on last week I had uh, had your father, had your father Amen. on, and my Amen. bishop, and I challenged them. And Amen. so now I wanted to come down a couple uh, generations, and I wanted to <laughs> talk to you same. because I'm kind of right in the middle. Amen. Um, and so Amen. I'm excited about that. But listen, you said something that I got a hit on. <laughs> Because you talked about the disciples being like a, a gang uh, uh, per se, and they, they went around with Jesus. They stuck together. Mm -hmm. That was a real brotherhood. Now, how would you say that the church, mm, now we're we getting, yeah. we getting ready to go there, y'all. Yeah, I, 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 I want a raw, a uncut version of the church because I know that you were raised in church. Amen. And there are so many people right now, and one of the things that we hear often is, I've been in church all my life. Mm -hmm. One of the things I... I